well, you've just retired, <clears throat> but you're not ready to head to the golf course full time. You'd like to take on a second career, but you're not quite sure how to do it. We'll discuss how to do that uh, successfully on the Dollar Stretcher interview. Hi, I'm Gary Foreman, editor of thedollarstretcher.com. With me today is John Tarnoff. John is a career reinvention coach, speaker, and author. He focuses on helping baby boomers and reinventing their careers. John spent nearly 30 years as a Los Angeles-based film producer, studio executive, and tech entrepreneur before reinventing his own career at age 50. He went back to school to earn an MA in counseling psychology. He also blogs at johntarnoff.com. John, welcome to the Dollar Stretcher interview. Great to be here, Gary. Thanks for inviting me. John, uh, uh, like you, I reinvented uh, a second career uh, uh, in my early 40s. Uh, what constitutes a good basis for a second career? Well, I think that one of the things that characterizes our generation and makes it different from our parents' generation, previous generations, is this quest for meaning and purpose, which we seem to be uh, all over now in the later part of our careers. And I think we're looking at, at increased longevity. We're going to be living longer, maybe 10, 20 years longer than our parents. And uh, we're not quite sure what to do with this second act of life. Um, and I think getting back to the meaning and purpose, the most important thing that any of us can do in looking for an encore career, second act career, whatever we call it, uh, is to really focus on what is a heartfelt, meaningful pursuit for us to engage in. Now, one thing that I've noticed is that a lot of times that means going from being uh, some, an employee for someone else to being self-employed. And that, uh, now what does somebody who's been a lifelong employee need to know before taking, uh, taking the plunge to self-employment? Right. Well, you know, I would back up one sec on that. And I agree with you. I think that clearly this is becoming a much more entrepreneurial economy for everybody, not just for boomers, but for Gen X and millennials particularly. So I think that we definitely have to take on a more entrepreneurial mindset as a generation if we have been stuck in or actually having a great time in uh, corporate America for the last 30, maybe 40 years. Uh, so uh, I, I think it needs to be a gradual process. And, I, and I, I want to reassure people out there who are kind of iffy about stepping into the entrepreneurial world, that there are ways of doing this progressively that where it doesn't have to feel like a jumping into a, the deep end of a cold pool. And then what, what would be some of the first steps that you would advise people? Well, I think while you're still employed uh, and uh, I'm, I'm sending this message out particularly to people in their early 50s where you're starting to feel like you're coming around the bend towards retirement and getting into that phase in your 60s is to really start thinking about what has, you know, juice for you uh, out there. Um, one of the things that I think is, is important to recognize is that something that we might have fantasized about doing in our 20s um, or maybe something that was interrupted for us in our 20s when we went and did something else because we had to get a job, we had to make a living, we had to raise a family. We have to be really careful about going back to that idea now that we're in our 50s because we've changed. And the, the fascination or the, the, you know, the, the, the quality of that endeavor, which seemed to appeal to us in our 20s, may no longer appeal to us uh, at this time in our lives. So we have to be careful about that. But I think there's, overall, there's a lot of processes that we can do, can do to start encouraging that, that creation, that formation inside ourselves of what it is that we want to do. And that, so basically, you begin with self-examination self of what you really want from the, uh, the balance of your life. It, it, really is, it really starts on the inside. And I think we have to be careful of looking for advice first on the outside. I mean, advice is great. And I think we should certainly listen to what people have to say. But we have to balance that with what resonates deeply for us. And I think that we're so used to, in our, in our culture, uh, being externally focused. You know, I need to make this much money. I need to be in this kind of job, this kind of place, whatever. 
where we need to really reflect first on who we are, what we like to do, what's a possibility. Um, and I think that's really important. Now, one, one thing that I find, uh, because I agree with you, I think a lot of it is about, uh, about happiness for, uh, for you know, this, this next section of, of our lives. Uh, part of that is, uh, is often things that are kind of untested, uh, things that we're not that familiar with. Uh, uh, you know, how do you, how do you evaluate, you know, take those baby steps uh, and, and evaluate whether you're, you're actually on the right path or, or whether you're heading for a dead end? Sure, I mean, that's a really good question. And again, in the spirit of going gradual, one of the great things about living today is the fact that we're all connected electronically. And if you want to pursue a, an interest in anything, there is a community of people out there who are doing it, who are all over the internet. And all you need to do, whether it's Facebook or LinkedIn or another social network, is start to seek out who's doing this thing that you're interested in doing and start building relationships. And this is a technique which I think applies across the board. If you have to do a quick turnaround or you're exploring a slow turnaround, there are ways of meeting people, understanding how a particular business, a particular business works, uh, what the practices are, the kinds of personalities that are drawn to that business, and do you fit in? Is that something that really starts to resonate? Now, something else I've noticed in, in your career uh, change uh, as part of it, uh, the additional education, you know, going back for a master's degree uh, after uh, finishing a bachelor decades earlier, it's a little unusual in that. Uh, how how uh, can uh, baby boomers handle that change? I know for myself, I can't, but frankly, I, I'd have a hard time imagining becoming a, a, a student again. You know, it was a great experience. And um, uh, and I think if you talk to people who, who go back to school at a later age, the vast majority of them will tell you that it's been a great experience, that many of them go in thinking, oh, you know, can I do this again? And what's it going to be like sitting in class with kids again? It's great. Uh, and I think that we have this idea that we can't go home again or we can't go backwards. but this goes to this Buddhist concept of the beginner's mind, where you wake up in the morning and it's a new day, it's a new dispensation, and you're open to whatever life is going to throw at you. And getting back into a classroom and studying and learning new things gives you such a different perspective on your life. Uh, it's, it's really valuable. Now, whether you're going for a degree or a certificate or even some class that is that has no uh, no no accreditation to it, but gives you an experience that you can pivot off of. I think that education is a great way to begin a reinvention. Now it, it could be. I mean, for me, I know with the dollar stretcher uh, and the technology involved, I'm I'm forced to to continually learn new things. It's just there's no no examination. So it could be that really I'm doing exactly what you're talking about. I just don't recognize it as such because we're so used to formal structured classrooms when we were right. growing up. And the thing is that that learning today is lifelong. I think when we grew up, there was a pretty clear structure about how life worked. You got your education, that got you the job, and the job got you your retirement. It was those three phases, and that's what we were brought up with, and life hasn't turned out to work that way. Uh, things are much mm. more changeable today. Uh, business is turning over faster than ever. I think the reason why you see so many layoffs in corporate America is that companies are really struggling to figure out how to cope with the future. and. Mm and their workers suffer for it, and the companies suffer for it. The companies are being disrupted and, and put out of business by new technology, new creativity, uh, and, and, and new companies are nipping at the heels of the older companies. So it's a free-for-all out there. And learning is the way that all of us, starting with the boomers, but all the way down to the millennials, are going to keep ourselves working because we constantly have to renew our skills, our perspective, our understanding of what the landscape is. So it's, it's, a, it's a different world out there. 
Yeah, I, well, I think this is probably the, the, the biggest change since the Industrial Revolution. And, and we just happen to be the first generation that's facing it. Now, it, you've seen a lot of people uh, reinvent themselves. Uh, are there certain characteristics that uh, you've seen that are common among those that are successful or other characteristics uh, that uh, tend to be common among those who aren't successful? Sure. Well, you know, I've put together this five-step reinvention uh, methodology, which is really based on a lot of observations from people that I've talked to from obstacles in my own uh, career and career reinvention. And the first step there is to reframe your idea about who you are, how the world works, what you're capable of doing, to really examine the limiting beliefs that you have about everything uh, and, and adopt a willingness to think differently about your life, about your career, about yourself. Uh, the second step is to listen to feedback from your close network about who you are, what you've done, the, the problems that you've had, the successes you've had, uh, and to really get a different perspective on what your life is and has been. And the third step is to accept all of it, accept the past, accept the bridges that you burned, the relationships that you missed, the opportunities that you didn't go for, all the stuff that you're judging yourself for in looking back over the last 20, 30, maybe 40 years, uh, because if you can't reconcile the past, you can't move on to the future. And then the next step is to what I call express, which is to, getting back to your first question about what, you know, what should we do to, to move on, to reinvent ourselves, the express part of my system is about visualizing yourself in your new life. And it's really important that we do this carefully because this is likely going to be our last pivot. Uh, and so we wanna make it the right one. We want to be able to have a life that's got the right balance to it, where it's got the meaning, the purpose, it's got the money. Uh, it's something that's gonna be able to sustain us, which is why entrepreneurship is important. So there's a lot of visualization that goes on in this step for me, a lot of diary work, uh, mind mapping, uh, vision boards, lots of these kinds of uh, behavioral techniques. And then the final step is connecting. And this is to go out and connect with people. We were talking about this before, about using the internet to go out, use social networks to connect with people. You don't get a job with a resume anymore. And you don't get a job by submitting a resume and expecting someone to call you to come in for a, uh, an interview. You do this by meeting people, building affinity groups, and getting to the point where you become a known quantity where people are calling you as opposed to you having to knock down the door uh, and, uh, and, and get to meet with them. Yeah, now I know you have a lot of this stuff available on johncarnoff.com, correct? Yep, and they absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, we, we, we'll, uh, we'll link to that uh, uh, from the video here. And, uh, but we encourage you, if, if you're considering a second career, uh, you'd be remiss not to visit, uh, visit John's website. And, uh, but it sounds, in a way, it, it sounds like uh, what you're describing is what baby boomers have lived. I mean, I, growing up, we all believed that we were going to experiment and try to find a different way, reinvent things, uh, and frankly, do our own thing. And so really, we're still doing the exact same thing now, just a few decades later. Well, I think we are. And I think a lot of us kind of got off the track and forgot about that, frankly. Uh, and, and I think the most important thing that we have to do, the most important first step is to be willing to change. And change is very scary. Uh, and a lot of us have gone through some really heavy times over the last 10 years. Uh, downsized out of jobs, uh, lost a lot of asset value in the recession, lost homes in many cases. We're dealing with um, millennial kids who are having a difficult time getting launched out into the world because job prospects are not great for their generation either. Uh, so a lot of them are staying at home. A lot of them are still on our health care insurance, right? Uh, and then we've got our parents. A lot of us are dealing with caring for our parents. So we're sandwiched here at a time where opportunities are being reduced for us in many cases. And it's a, it's a dilemma. So I think we have to fight back, right? We have, to, we have to dig deep. We have to pull that unconventional wisdom that we grew up with and prided ourselves on and use this to, again, stand up, 
be more entrepreneurial, be more enterprising, be willing to change, and go reinvent ourselves. Okay. I think that's, that's some great advice for, uh, uh, for baby boomers who are looking for, uh, for a different career for the la latter part of their life. I uh, want to thank you for sharing with, uh, with our, our viewers today. We want to thank the viewers for watching us. Uh, invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and make sure you visit johntarnoff.com and thedollarstructure.com. We'll look forward to seeing you again on the next Dollar Structure interview. Thanks, Gary.